book 240. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Morning Motivation with Matthew Daniels. And today, I'm going to tell you guys about where did God really take Enoch and why? That's right. Where did God really take Enoch and why? But what is Matthew Daniels talking about? Um, A long, long time ago, an Israelite scribe wrote down a single sentence that has caused mankind to debate, wonder, and hypothesize for literally thousands of years. This sentence, which the scribe wrote, was this. He wrote, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This simple phrase, which was clear to the author who penned the words, has spawned a multiplicity of theories of what really happened to this man Enoch and why. This curiosity caused another Israelite scribe who lived between 300 and 200 BCE to write an entire book called The Book of Enoch, and he even claimed that Enoch himself was the author of this text. Much of what he said in this work was factual information. However, even the Book of Enoch does not tell the unadulterated truth of this story. However, one of my ancestors, no less, lived during the time of the first Israelite scribe who actually penned the words in the book of Genesis, and this ancestor did indeed know exactly what he meant. The true meaning of the enigmatic sentence has been passed down directly to me from mouth to ear. I was told that when Enoch was born, the entire earth was filled with violence and wickedness. Immorality and a complete disdain for all things holy were rampant within the earth. A race of beings, which the Israelites called sons of God, had descended from the heavens and made their home on earth amongst men. These beings, who looked upon the daughters of mankind as beautiful, violated the laws of nature and took them as wives and concubines. They even had babies by these human women, and the babies were born larger and stronger than regular humans, and they possessed genetics that made them predisposed to violence. Mankind attempted to war with these celestial beings for kidnapping their mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters, but humanity was no match for their superior weapons of war. As the man Enoch got older, he saw the wickedness of both the humans and the sons of God, and he watched as murder and mayhem overtook their hearts continually. He then began to preach from the high places and teach from the low places that if they did not change their ways, they would be destroyed by God himself. Enoch traveled around the earth, condemning mankind and the celestial beings, and since he walked in the power of God, his words cut through their sinful hearts like a mighty sword. The celestial beings became very angry with Enoch, and mankind became enraged as well. And so, the two groups convened to discuss what should be done about this holy man who invoked the wrath of God upon them. Deciding that Enoch should die for his words, they caught him in the fields one day with his head down in prayer, and they fell upon him and beat him to the point of death. When God heard Enoch cry out to him, his heart was hurt. Enoch was the last human left who loved God with his whole heart. So, God came down from his throne, picked up the body of Enoch, and carried him swiftly to the Garden of Eden, which was sealed off from mankind. Then, God gave Enoch the fruit of the tree of life, and his soul promptly returned to his body. God embraced Enoch and said that he would now live forever because he righteously walked with God. God then allowed Enoch to live out the rest of his days in peace within the Garden of Eden. Also, because of what they conspired to do to the most holy Enoch, God had suffered mankind and the celestial beings long enough. It was then that God decided to send the great flood upon the earth. And God told Enoch that he would live in heaven with God after the flood, and his great-grandson Noah would continue his bloodline on earth. And so, the morning motivation of today is, where did God really take Enoch and why? Some of us have been born into an environment where bad behavior is more normal than good. And some of us have been taught that wickedness is just the natural state of our existence. However, regardless if those around you have descended into degenerate behavior, it is your natural state to be righteous and good. So today, if you are surrounded by wickedness, do not succumb to the pressure to fall in line. Instead, pave your own path by being different, and you will be rewarded in time. Today, go out and be your own person, and always strive to do that which is good. And remember, you are awesome, you are amazing, you are wonderful, and you are great. And you are going to change the world. I just hope I'm still alive to see it, family. I'm out. Good morning. 
to order books by the author Matthew Daniels, search Matthew Daniels on Amazon.com or visit www.dandyandbighern.com.